All right, so uh, I'm going to be giving a talk on uh, a rotor reflector for a form building framework called Form Sensible. Um, Jay Curry originally wrote Form Sensible. Uh, I do a lot of contracting for ION0, and he's uh, ahead of ION0. And we looked at the status of form stuff for a uh, web page and whatnot. Web page stuff and, uh, and I decided that it's not very good. And um, a couple of them, I mean, there's a couple out there that are pretty reasonable, but um, we wanted something that we uh, couldn't find anywhere else. So, um, so he wrote the original form sensible uh, module. I wrote the reflector and uh, a reflector. And this talks basically for anyone who kind of wants plug and play uh, web uh, forms for the web. Basically, form sensible is just uh, the idea is just to keep it as simple as possible. Give it a hash with uh, some some parameters and get a form out of it. Uh, the reflector is basically just to say, okay, I already have a form like like structure. I want to create a form out of it instead of having to create a form class and create a, in this instance a DBX class schema definition. So um, this is a class for that. Uh, you want to use it. I use it uh, whenever someone says we have a uh, we have a form that has. 50 text boxes, and we have a database that, that, uh, that goes into it. And I'm like, well, I really don't want to do that by hand with HTML, and I really don't want to use the framework uh, outside of that, and I really don't want to do really any of the, the form generation myself, so I'm just going to use a reflector. So uh, it's also for, like I said, when you already have something that's form like, and you just want that to spit out an HTML for you. So you're going to basically, all you're going to be doing is defining your DBIX class schema. And uh, that alone will get you a, a fairly reasonable form. I mean, that, you basically have uh, something that's going to be you know, a text field with a bar, with a bar char. Uh, you have a size definition already. It's, Seems pretty reasonable for something you could just use as a form uh, definite form element definition. Um, forms really suck ass. I just I, every time I have to build a user interface with forms and I have to do it manually, it just it really takes a lot of uh, pep out of my step. And um, they're just a very meticulous and they're a pain in the ass to put together. Uh, they're error prone. Um, HTML, if you're using a form framework, um, they're just, they're error prone, unless you have something predetermined. Um, it becomes really hard to customize things if you do, in fact, do them programmatically. I mean, people get clever and they're like, oh, well, I have X number of text fields and I can just use map or I can use a for loop and then, yeah, you get all your form fields and elements, but if you don't, uh, if you don't add your attributes correctly via hash rep, whatever, you end up losing a lot of customization and you end up with a very manufactured product. Um, and if you do end up actually incorporating all that extra stuff, you end up with my reflector. So basically, this is a form. It's really fucking boring. It's not, you know, it's a, uh, it's, I mean, all this HTML, I mean, that's a lot of HTML in my opinion to get to, uh, to Input input elements and uh, labels go. So you want to have one place to define your forms. You already have a form-like data structure. Um, I want to go over some existing frameworks and why I don't really use them. Um, HTML form handler is moose based. It's 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 pretty reasonable, honestly. It's it's not bad, but. I have a real problem with having to create a form class for each of my forms, um, especially since I have a relational database that can already uh, model that for me. 
and the uh, the model subclass uh, doesn't do a whole lot except for maybe um, you still actually have to define all your classes. It just allows you to write to a database. Um, Rose HTML form is about the same. The APIs, most of these APIs are relatively the same, but um, I, I don't like, you have to define a build form and a validate form, a method for each form, and it, it just gets really cumbersome, in my opinion, to use um, for any, any sort of uh, serious form. Uh, this one really, uh, I found interesting, I guess. Does it use RDBO? Yep, sure does. Fun times. And that's, that's, yep, I'm, I'm getting at that. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of RDB, uh, Rose DB uh, object. Um, I like DBIX class. Rose DB object does some really interesting things. Um, this is supposed to kind of do what my reflector does, except it just generates the form classes and writes them out. As you can see, you uh, basically give it a app prefix or namespace prefix. Uh, you can specify Perl tidy options, uh, a, a database instance, and where to put your uh, generated schema classes. I have a problem with that because, um, again, now not only do you have to update your database schema, your schema classes, but you also have to update your uh, schema, cl schema class form definitions. So that's still not solving the one one solution for your form, uh, your forms. Reaction was kind of an experiment by Matt Trout. Um, he's admitted it's defunct, and there were uh, issues that caused it to fail, essentially. Um, but some really good research came out of it, and uh, I think it, it deserves um, a spot here. Uh, this is, in essence, the controller code. Uh, the action code, actually, for um, a basic CRUD app, create, read, update, delete, um, which is really cool. Catalyst hasn't really had a legitimate uh, CRUD uh, layer ever. It's got it's got auto CRUD, which does some cool stuff, but there's still quite a bit you actually have to put together. Um, there, there's uh, some. Some crud, auto crud, there was an enzyme or something. There was a couple. Um, but they're still not quite what I want. And after all the setup, the big thing, I, the big problem I had with reaction. Simple crud is a danger. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the, the big thing, I, the big problem I had with reaction is um, the tediousness of setting things up. Uh, you'd have multiple templates you'd have to set up for. Uh, very trivial things that I really didn't seem I didn't see any point in doing and after all the setup it, it didn't seem like okay well I got a crud app out of it but that was really you know, there's nothing like groundbreaking there really the reaction was too big for a crud app yeah it was it was just there's too much stuff there for a simple crud app uh, arguments might be used or separations of logic you know yeah sure you have your your form namespace under your app, and you know that's where all your form definitions are. But um, what really prompted me to write this talk, uh, and even more so uh, after I decided to write the reflector a while ago, uh, I had a client I was working with, and we ended up having to define a new column in the database, which decide, which caused me to have to go through and update the schema. I had to update the uh, database itself, the database schema, which is using Rose DB object, something else, and a, D and a Rose uh, Rose HTML form. So that's like three or four things for one edition of a field to a form. And I, I thought that was a little ridiculous, personally. Um, basically, it's just it doesn't really help you keep things, you know. Kind of the general consensus with Perl or programming in general. I, I'm misquoting somebody, but you know, if you're copying and pasting something, then you need to make it a method or you need to make it a function. So, yeah, and uh, you know, th this breaks that. So, uh, again, you want rapid prototyping because, like I said, all you need is a DBX class schema. 
and you can get a relatively same form. I mean, you're going to have uh, things you need to tweak, but uh, you'll have a form, and it'll do what you want. Um, so this is basically, um, these are some additions to uh, a DBIX class results, uh, or a result source definition. Um, render hints just is a, actually a form sensible attribute. And this just tells a, uh, I believe that this is taken from an enum, and it renders it as a uh, select. And it tells, it tells you, it tells the select field what to display as the label and what its value is going to be. Um, the reflector has some issues picking that out automatically. So um, the, you're going to, all you need is add, all you need to do is add um, these types of render hints for specifics like that. Otherwise, everything renders pretty sensibly. Uh, you can also you also you might want to render an enum in uh, your database as a list of checkboxes or something. Um, this is the original code, and then you just add a render hints uh, hash key. And another reason for using the reflector is you don't really want to deal with a CRUD system again. Uh, Catalyst doesn't really have very many, but every single homebrewed CRUD system I've seen uh, is generally a, an area of code that um, gives everyone grief. And they either don't want to deal with it uh, because of the way it's been written, or it's just it's just you just end up pouring hours into it uh, to make any sort of change. Um, they're crippling, really. If you don't write it correctly which takes a lot of time, you end up making constant changes or you end up with something that's constantly throwing errors or just not uh, doing the right thing and essentially being broken the entire time. So the main points from how other systems take care of this is there's just too many places you have to make changes, too many places you have to add things, um, too many places you have to manage. Uh, they really don't make form management any easier, they just make it doable through Perl. Um, and again, it's either they want total control of your forms and want their own namespace and uh, you know, they, they, want, they want you to follow their rules and conventions or they don't really do enough and you, know, you have to end up writing your own validation and up having to write your own they just don't have. They don't. They don't give you enough control over your programmatic forms. Um, so no, I found that nothing else really does it the way I want to do it. So, um, gone over the basics. Uh, you've seen a little bit of code. Uh, basically, your table is a form. I'm sure there's something wrong with that uh, design-wise, but it made the most sense to me. Most. You're going to have a form that represents a table. Uh, surely there's going to be uh, joins and whatnot, but right now a table represents a form. So this is uh, a very slim down and incomplete DBIX class uh, result source. Um, and uh, this is how you create the reflector off of that. Uh, I'm, I'm biased towards Catalyst, so this is uh, C model is a just a result set from DBIX class. Uh, and all you do is you create your, for your uh, reflector DBIC object, pass it the result set object, give the form a name, and you have a form. And yeah, that's it. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically the complete form. It's, got, it's using tiny MCE for the text area, but. Uh, Not a tiny anymore. Yeah, it's not so uh, But the uh, main point here is you point reflector at a uh, DBIX class um, schema definition, and you have forms. And you have really zero UI you have to worry about. If you want to change how things look, you use style sheets. It's all uh, uh, form sensible, uses fairly reasonable HTML. Everything's got an ID, everything's got a class. Um, and you can actually change all of that, but it's uh, it, it does what I want um, at this point. Um, I believe in whittling. You know, start with something big, 
pare it down. I mean, somebody wants a big project, I don't want to sit there and spend 90% of my time trying to get a form to look right when I have, you know, 20 other things I have to, I have to take care of, um, not including uh, performance and uh, optimization. Um, so, obviously there are some drawbacks. Like I said, relationships in DBIX class don't work just yet. Um, there's code in Form Sensible that allows you to do many-to-many uh, -many relationship type stuff, render them as checkboxes. Uh, you mean relationships where your forms don't work in DBIC? Uh, uh, I meant in, in uh, Reflective DBIC. They don't work in it. You can't, you can't. You said that relationships in DBIC don't work. Oh, and that's well, obviously I'm sorry. Yes, they don't work in my forms with DBIX class, right? Yeah. Um, they obviously do work. Obviously, do work in DBIX class. Yes, uh, yes. Well, we're not um, active record here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so again, like I said, a table is a form. There's no, you know, you can't have a joined a joined table. You could have a joined table, but you can't have uh, fields from a joined uh, table included in your. Uh, in, in a single form. Um, ne a, a new version will fix that, but um, uh, rendering is also a little iffy. It doesn't, it's not very smart. It's just basically, you know, if it's a text, uh, if, the, if it's text type, it's a text area. If it's a bar char, it's currently just a, a text field. It doesn't look at the size of the bar char to say, well, maybe a 1024 size bar char should be a text area or something like that. Um, it's a little annoying, it's, it's tedious, and I, I figured something like that was going to happen, but again, we're still working on pairing. Uh, hopefully, people will actually be interested by this, because um, I'm, I'm a real advocate of using what's there to make what you need more possible. And again, I, I just, I can't, I, I really, it really irks me that I have to, with other systems, define a form in multiple places when I have this perfectly good data uh, data set and a schema that takes care of that part. So, um, so right now it does what I want. Uh, someone else might find it useful. I don't have a huge user base, I don't think, but uh, I'm happy with it. And uh, that's really all I have. Do you guys have any questions? You ran over. Yeah? Well, yeah, well you started with it. Yeah, certainly. Yes, I know. I'm actually assuming it's short. Does it do anything for when you say if you didn't want some of the fields to show on the page? Or that yeah, good? actually, I, I kind of skip, I kind of blew right past that. Um, but render hints, uh, you can either render it as hidden, and it won't show up in, it won't, it'll show up as a hidden field. Um, or you can actually, it's a little hacky, but you can manipulate the form uh, after you create it through the reflector and delete that field or something. Um, I was thinking like certain fields like maybe date code or things where they created it, you might have one. Yeah, you, you can do that. Currently it just defaults to hidden. Again, that's one of the things. Um, right now it just hides primary key um, fields. Uh, it's not really ideal if you want it. To include that form as um, maybe a checkbox, you know, like a, with my uh, JQ grid one, you might want. Uh, if you were doing a form like that, if you're doing an administrative form like that, you probably want checkboxes next to each ID or something, or represent an ID as a checkbox or something like that. Um, you can you can you know manipulate the field. It's not really ideal. It's a little hacky, but. Uh, it basically just gives you the form sensible object back and allows you to manipulate it as needed. So, how does it render date fields? Uh, just text right now. Um, just a text field. I couldn't really. I thought, uh, you know, I thought about doing a whole big jQuery UI thing, and I was like, if people want that, they just probably include it. And there's absolutely zero sense in trying to get my Perl to generate JavaScript or anything sick and disgusting like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and again, like with jQuery, all you have to do is uh, yeah, give it a give it an ID and it'll create a date selector for you. So I was like text field is fine for me. So
Thank you.